So today I am welcoming Beth Dalali and uh, Jalali. I just, Jalali. I said mm -hmm. that wrong right from the beginning, right from the get go. <laughs> um, well, Beth runs an amazing program called Style at a Certain Age, and I followed you, Beth. Just so you know, I followed you before I ever thought about starting a podcast because I was at that age where. You know, I'd been a stay at home mom also, and I was into sweatpants and leggings. I didn't care what, I, I just didn't have time. I didn't think about uh, taking care of myself. And then I found you and it's like, oh gosh, it's almost like I had to relearn. So tell mm -hmm. us Beth, all, you know, a bit about your business, what your business is and who it's for. Sure. Well, I accidentally fell into all of this when I was 56 years old. And at the time, I didn't even, I, I was somewhat aware of blogs. They were kind of on my, mm -hmm. I, I didn't read blogs. I wasn't that cognizant of, of them. Um, when was but, this about time frame? So this was in, uh, so we were living in San Francisco. My husband was alive at the time and we were living in San Francisco. So it was 2015. So actually I was trying to get into the publishing world as a writer. And oh, that is how I you know, stumbled on, onto social media and then blogging in particular, then which launched my business. But I had written a book, actually when I was 50, we were living in Shanghai and I had two of my children were at university. And so I saw, okay, what's next? What's next for me? But I'd stayed home for 20, six years and I was paralyzed with, do I have to go back to school? I don't wanna go back to school. Who's going to hire me? I have skills, but how are they translatable? Yeah. And honestly, corporate America does not reward or give you any bonuses for staying home and raising functioning human beings. <laughs> Isn't that uh, true? But that, that's a whole nother topic. But, right, uh, right. but to make a long, I'll give you the Reader's <laughs> Digest version. So I, decided I was going to be a writer and, and write a book, which actually really does, it, it segues into blogging very succinctly because there is quite a lot of writing that you do with blogging. But uh, having no idea, never written a book before, it actually took me a while you know, to research it and, and to finish my book. And so I snagged an agent from New York and that was the first time anyone had sat me down and said, you need a social media presence. You need, it, especially if you want to be a writer, if you have a book coming on the scene because public, this was back in 2012. And so we'd had the crash of 20, uh, 2008. So publishing had changed me. A lot of things were really starting to change. Yeah. And when he sat me down, I was like, well, I think I have five Facebook friends. And he's like, <laughs> go find some more. And I was like, <laughs> I'm like, well, I just figured out how to write a book. I have to, you know, go figure something else out. You have to find so anyway, friends. Fast, fast forward to when we were living in San Francisco, and the first book didn't get picked up, so I was writing the second book. Okay, these and, were and actually books or not? No, I I haven't published any any books because the blogging came along and social media and all of that, and it really just you know it took up every you know every minute of my day because I was on such a steep learning curve with you know, with this industry but but it but anyway so in 2015 i i um because i put the social media presence on the back burner because the book didn't get picked up and also i was really struggling with well what can i speak authentically to i can't just be on because in 2012 twitter and facebook were the big social media channels and right it was me just trying to figure out okay how do i segue into this environment in a very authentic way mm -hmm. and one day and, and i've had this my entire life i've had people comment on my home decorating they love it and they also love my style and i just had a, a just a random woman stop me loved my outfit asked me if i was a stylist and i was almost finished with my second book so i was thinking about social media presence again and i was like that's it so i was I was aware of the 20 somethings posting outfits of the day. 
Yeah. And yeah. I was like, I can do that. I can speak authentically to that. This is what I'm going to do. So from that very first outfit, I mean, it just took off in ways that I never expected because I didn't know it could be a business. I didn't know you could monetize it. I didn't know. I mean, I was just putting it out there so I could tell my agent I had a social media presence. But then fast forward to 2022 and it's a it's a thriving business it's it's just been crazy but the first few years were very daunting because i'm not that tech savvy i think many women yeah. and yeah. men of our generation are not tech savvy it doesn't come naturally to us as it does to our children or even our, our grandchildren right. so it was a very steep learning curve but i think i i i have a fairly good idea of of all of the you know, back end of the blog and social media and all of that. So, but but today, styled a certain age, it, it serves a demographic, a very underserved demographic, and that is the 50 plus woman. Okay. And it really is when, uh, oh, that, that's Oscar, that's my, that's my German I Shepherd in the background. <laughs> there's, a, there's a dog walking in front of his house. <laughs> <laughs> I love that. Yeah, he's just gonna let you that. <laughs> That's right. But, but I think, and you just briefly stated this when you started following me, I think that when we become a certain age and especially in years gone by, we really just kind of vanished. We just became invisible. And I still have so many women come and tell me that they've really struggled with, you know, how to transition from how they dressed in their thirties and forties to how they dress today and that they honestly they when they walk into a room they really do feel perhaps they were getting all all the attention all eyes on them when they were younger but they're feeling left out somehow yeah. so and definitely brands have left us out they have. for many years yeah. for many many years but that's changing but that's you know we are really pushing the you know the boundaries back so but when i really came on the scene it was uh just to to give inspiration a it was just style inspiration and then once i realized i would get all these emails and you know, direct messages you know when i was on you know facebook and instagram of really how underserved we are so it was you know so for me it was like okay how how can I best serve this demographic uh, in other ways, just besides style inspiration? And for me, it's very important because I'm aging, you're aging. Every right. single person that's alive on this planet is aging. Right. Actually, that's the one thing that we have in common. Every single human being, <laughs> I mean, it, you know, it crosses all, you know, all, all demographics, all, you know, gender, race, whatever, we are all aging. So that is a very unifying thing, but it's been perceived in a very negative way mm -hmm. for so many years. So mm -hmm. for me, it's, and my mantra is aging with grace, strength, and beauty, because we need all three of those things. So I try to bring that to my, to my reader, to my, you know, viewer, I mean, whichever channel we're, we're discussing, yeah. that it really is my mission. And of course we have to get up and get dressed every day, right? Right. That's we might as well, we might as well look as best we can. Yeah. So, yeah. 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 I love, I love that you, you know, talk about the fact that the, the similarity we all have, no matter where we are and uh, where we live demographics is we're in the line, so to speak. We just don't know when we're going to be called to right. the next, whatever you believe. But so many women, feel as though we have to like try to move back in the line you know like uh to right. go back to wh where we were before whether it's you know and I, I i'm not opposed to plastic surgery but going that route or or even how we dress you know um my mother who recently passed away had a beautiful figure right up to the point that she died but she often dressed as though she was still you know 30. <laughs> 35 because she mm -hmm. had great legs um mm -hmm. so it's like how to what do you do in your blog as well as your youtube and we're going to talk about those two because your youtube channel is extremely successful mm -hmm. how you communicate to women and encourage women to accept that they are where they are in the line mm -hmm. and 
and you know i'm i can't compare myself to a 25 year old nor can i compare myself to what i was at 25 right. i am where i am right and how do you do that how do you communicate that well i think it's very very important just to look at where society has boxed us in and for so many years, and I, and I actually saw this when I first started blogging because I had gray hair. I went, I, I went gray. I mean, I discovered my first gray hair when I was 17. So <laughs> for me, it really was not, um, it, it, I had a, quite a long time to get used to gray hair. So, and I never dyed my hair. I always really just put highlights in to reveal it rather than conceal it. But wow, I was 50, my hairdresser said, we're just really putting in the same highlights that your hair is naturally doing. Let's just go, let's go natural. And I was like, great. And I never regretted looking back, but I was very aware when I first started blogging in 2015, because there were very few gray haired yeah. models or yeah. bloggers. And I used to get a lot of S H I T because yeah. I looked so old oh, and my. I did. Because gray hair, because women, we've been taught as a society yeah. that gray hair equals old. And, and we, as a society, value looking young at all costs. And I was like, this is ridiculous. Mm -hmm. I'm sorry, younger does not equal better. Younger is younger, it's great. I loved being young. Yeah. I admire you know, the 20-somethings, the 30-somethings. Every age has something wonderful to offer but you know so does 50 and so does 60 and so does 70 so for, so anyway so that was my first encounters of what society has you know put us in this box especially women and that we have been taught for so long to look young at any cost so either we're going to look young at any cost or we tend to go the the opposite way where it's just all about being age appropriate, which I don't even know what that means. Yeah. I, I have no idea what age appropriate means because <laughs> I when when women, you know, come and, and tell me that doesn't look age appropriate, uh, or I mean I get both. I get, oh you you look so age appropriate, oh you're not age appropriate, but I'm like, clothes have sizes, not ages. So yeah. so there again, you know, so for me it's been very important to look at what society has been telling women. Interesting. all these years and then just start to push those boundaries back so yeah. i just encourage one of the things that i love to encourage and we have so many choices in the 21st century so i just really try to share with my readers viewers that hey this may look great you may feel very confident wearing this outfit but somebody else might not not Right. But I think we have been, again, we've been trained and women uh, are, we can be very hard on each other. Mm -hmm. And Agreed. so if, if it's not to their liking or to their taste, we tend to be very negative and, and want the other person to change, you know, according, you know, to what our, what our rules are. And I just really gently remind everybody that, hey, guess what? The rule is there are no rules. I mean, of course, is there appropriate? Absolutely. I'm going to wear a certain outfit when I go to a wedding. Mm -hmm. I will wear a certain outfit if I attend a funeral. I will, you know, when I head to the beach or right. you fill in the blank. So yes, there is appropriate, but I truly don't believe that there is age appropriate. Yeah. And so I just gently, and I also just want women to be, I want us to be supportive of each other. Yes. And, and especially as we age, because there again, it can't just always be about, of course, we want to look the best. We mm -hmm. want to feel the best. We want to be the best version, but there's a lot that goes into that psychologically. It's not just, you know, putting an outfit on or, you know, putting makeup on it. There's a lot that goes into aging with grace, strength, and beauty. So those are some of the things that I, I just try to share to be the best version so a it's to be the best version i'm 63 this is my best version it's going to look different than another 63 year old so let's be kind let's not just start saying oh you know you look so old i mean why is that bad and then that's, and that's also one of the things well why is that bad why why am i fearful of looking old because guess what i am yeah. <laughs> 
isn't that the truth? Right? But so you, anyway. You mentioned that your husband's career must have taken you all over the world because you were in Shanghai, San Francisco. Now you're yes. in Athens, Georgia. I'm assuming there were lots of other places also. But how did all those different cultures or do you think those having exposure to those different cultures actually impacted the way you looked at aging, especially for a woman? I don't know if it impacted how I look at aging so much as just breaking down a lot of barriers. And Mark Twain said it best that travel is, um, what did he say? Travel is fatal to prejudice. Because when you are introduced to another culture mm -hmm. and you truly let that culture be what it is, not try to change it, you know, like, oh, I'm American and I'm living in China now, but and you know, I but I still want all of my American standards. Once you let that go, and once you see how another culture lives and works and um, plays, it's, it really is. It's very eye opening. And, and my my late husband, he was in the hospitality business, but he also he was Persian. So, but he grew up in Europe, and he was very exposed to to many cultures. And so, when when we married and moving around the world and different places in the United States. It just really opened up my eyes, I think, to be flexible and to let, and I, and I think that it does tie into aging, but it just really opened up my eyes that there's more than one way, you know, to live your life. You know, yeah. it's not just the American way. It's not just the Chinese way. It's not the Vietnamese way or the Austrian way. Right. And it yeah. was it was very impactful actually to to live overseas and to learn how to be flexible because you will have to be flexible a when you travel but definitely when you live in another culture. Yeah, yeah, totally. I I, I live in Paris half of the time and, and yes, I read that. I admire you. Oh That's gosh, we have, but you've lived all over the world. But it is you're absolutely right. It is completely different actually living in a place versus going and staying in a hotel and sitting in a cafe and watching people. Right. And we're both blessed that we had the opportunity to to go to places and actually live there. Um, but yes. it sustained you. I agree. Um, there was something you said, though. Um, so go go backwards a little bit to OK, you started the blog and the blog, I'm assuming you did it like on WordPress or whatever. How how did you get that out? Because YouTube didn't become a thing for quite a while. Right. Well, actually, I was even kind of late to the game to YouTube, I think. Um, but because YouTube's been around for like 10, 15 years. Really? Mm -hmm. It's like I, yeah. I really only paid attention to YouTube. Uh, you know, obviously, Google's been around for a long time. Yes. but. Yes. Yeah. It's, yes. It's, I mean, and actually, like, even when I started, it was like, is it too late to start a YouTube channel or, or even like Instagram is, you know, very big as well. And I'm over on Instagram. I mean, A, it's never too late to start anything. Yeah. And right. It's but never it's too easy late. To think it is. It's I easy know. to think, oh my God, I missed it. I missed right? it, whatever it is. That train has left the station. <laughs> right. Exactly. Exactly. That's and actually, I mean, I'll just take it back when I was writing my first book. And one of the things that uh, I was faced with was, oh my gosh, there's so many authors, so many accomplished authors, so many successful authors. How, you know, how am I going to, you know, fit into this? And then it was like, you know what, there's always room for one more good whatever. Book. Yeah. There's always room for one more good Instagram channel or, you know, I mean, fill in the blank. Yeah. I mean, I'm just yeah. relating that back to me, but there's always, always one, there's, there's always room. So, and, and it's never too late, but just with my blog, it was, that was what was very daunting actually, because WordPress at the time was very, I mean, you almost needed a, a programmer uh, degree. I mean, you almost needed, you know, a computer science degree because it was very, code oriented at that time it's really it's come a long way and they you know they've really streamlined things thank goodness but it was very daunting at the time and i'm and and honestly that was one of the things it's like i don't think i'm ever gonna figure this all out but i just kind of i i'm just that type of person I, i'll just jump in give it you know give it the old college try and if it you know yeah. if it doesn't work it doesn't work but i'm like well if everybody else has figured it out i think i can too i'm that's just my mentality 
Yeah. So, yeah. and now it's gotten a lot easier, as I said. But that's, th there's two important pieces to that. Now, if, you know, for anyone who's listening to this, that is now their children are launched and they're thinking of starting a business of their own or some other transition in their life. Uh, and they're saying, now's my time is to really fight that mindset that you you have missed the boat and rec and shift it into why not there's That's you know right. i i'm me and mm -hmm. there's nobody like me and therefore why not there's room for one more author one more style blogger one more blogger period because they talk about how blogs are dead and i yes. guess blogs are back actually i know <laughs> it's crazy but, um but also there was something, oh, technology and embracing that can do attitude that thank heavens they've made things more user friendly than they yes. were 15 years ago or whatever. Um, how awful, even five years ago. So we can yes. do this or hire somebody. Um, yes. You know, exactly. If that's something that's, that's going to keep you, why not hire somebody if that's going to hold you back? Um, that's a very good point because that's very important because you you have strengths i have strengths you tap mm -hmm. into that and so what you don't like to do or perhaps what are your weaknesses that's where you look for help and yeah. then that's when you know when you really bring somebody on that loves to do that and mm -hmm. is good at it and it and it makes you bigger and better yes yes so your your blog now goes out to people who are on your email list basically correct is that they come from all sorts of ways so i do have an email list i have a very uh healthy subscriber list but they also will come through social channels so facebook we have a big presence over on, on facebook instagram is a, a big channel as well and even my youtube community will come over and they'll read the blog too and then just organic search you know seo seo is very important so that's the search engine optimization so you, the mm -hmm. keywords and that's very very important there's certain topics that are very seo friendly uh, so and as as the blog has grown we really try to have those articles that focus on aging mm -hmm. rather than just uh, an outfit of course we always talk about the outfit or what i'm wearing but it we have expanded tremendously to, uh, to other topics too through using the the seo, SEO yes model as you call yes. it Yes, mm -hmm. calls it that I should say, but um, it was different. I would imagine doing the photographs, and I love that you said your husband was your original photographer. Yes. I thought mm -hmm. that was so so beautiful, and yeah. so obviously he really supported you doing something and creating something. He was a sounds like a wonderful cheerleader when you said I have to do yes. something. He was, he was amazing. And actually he was a brilliant businessman mm. and he taught me so much, especially in the early stages uh, of the game and really trained me and helped me hone in on those the, the, the business skills that I needed to run okay. a business. So it's not just, you know, I mean, I am a content creator and I love that aspect of it because I'm a creative person at heart, but you really do have to be a savvy business person out there. So he really was, and he was, he was so great, taught me so much. And yes, he was my first photographer. We, we joke now that, you know, if, if he were still alive, we would have had to, you know, put him on the bench. He would, he would have willingly go, gone on the bench, but I mean, he was only, he was, a, he was a very good photographer, but he had really no interest in like all the nuances that are so important you know, to, to photos. So, which, you know, the photographers that I have on board now, they're amazing yeah. and yeah. are, you know, professionals in every sense of the way. So yeah, we always laugh about that, but he did, he did, he, he was, and he knew way back when I was struggling, when I was 50 and trying to figure out mm -hmm. what I was going to do for the rest of my life. He was the one, he was completely confident. He's like, I have no idea why you are being so scatterbrained here that you don't think that you can do anything he's like i know you and you'll figure it out so he he had full confidence love that yeah. sometimes we have to have those the i think maybe always we have to have that cheerleader in our corner yes. especially if if we deal with any kind of self-doubt along the way which everyone does we all yes. do um 
so how how did you so taking the photographs is very different from being on YouTube. So tell us about that transition, like when you decided to go on to YouTube. And now we're talking videos and now you're speaking and you have a lovely speaking voice, but still you have to ad lib on, I'm assuming, on YouTube. So tell us about that transition and how you got up for it, how you got yourself prepared for that change. Sure. Well, when we launched the blog in 2015, and it just really, uh, it did take off in just so many wonderful and unexpected ways. But when I was on the different social media channels, and when you are paying attention to what's going on in your industry, we all saw that video was really big, and it was going to be very big, which we all know. It's, everything is just uh, going to video, short content, long content, any content is, is video oriented. So this was in 2017. And actually, we, we launched the channel right before my husband was diagnosed with liver cancer. So YouTube's always, I always feel like it's kind of my lost child, um, because it, it's taken, it's taken a hit now, you know, now and again, because of that. But mm -hmm. we just saw the video was where it was going. And it was like, okay, let's just, let's just do this. And I had no idea what I was doing on YouTube, just like I had no idea what I was doing uh, with the blog, but, I, but there again, it was just like, I was gonna figure it out along the way. So it is very different than taking photographs because your, your personality really comes alive yeah. over on YouTube. So you are either going to embrace that and you're just going to look at the camera as that is, so I just really look at the camera like uh, I'm looking at you and my right. camera now. Yes. But, so that's when I'm when I'm filming my YouTube videos. That's really what I'm just kind of imagining. I really just feel like I'm just talking to my audience, and you know, we're just having a, as you said, just a you know one to one girl, mm -hmm. a girlfriend chat. We're just having tea together, and so so that's really how I have viewed YouTube. And mm -hmm. when my husband was diagnosed with cancer, one of the things, and I'm really and I'm very proud of myself uh, for figuring this out because it was like, well, I won't be able to do the long content as much as I would like to, but I wanted to keep my YouTube channel going. So we, so I came up with, we, we later dubbed it Fashion Flash and it's now what an Instagram reel is. But so it was like, okay, if we're out taking photos, I'll just have my husband film little snippets of it and we'll put it together and we'll, you know, so basically it's just me showcasing the outfit and it, it was very, very, very popular over there. So that was just, you know, so there again, you just, you always have to be kind of innovative as a, mm -hmm. as a business person mm -hmm. and be able to pivot quickly. So that's what we did to stay the game over on YouTube. But, but now we do have, uh, I have a lovely videographer that, that helps me and, you know, editing's also very, very key over there. But I think at the, at the end of the day, it's you just have really have to look at YouTube. I love it because I feel like I can really tap into my my audience and just have have a chat with them. I have to admit um, a, a nasty secret, and that is I became like a YouTube addict during COVID. Um, uh -huh. I had never watched YouTube much before, and now I I subscribe. I've got you know my favorites. Obviously, I have to have alerts, and you're one of them. Um, I there's something about video that you know I'm no different than the rest of the people. Um, there's something about video that makes us feel like the person is talking to us. Where in a blog, and even if it comes in an email form and it says "Dear Sherry" or "Dear Beth," you just know it's been pre-done and uh, all set up in such a way where somehow our brains cannot decipher that the same thing happened in YouTube and they're not sitting talking <laughs> to Sherry. Right. <laughs> but our brains can't decipher the difference. Right. Uh, which is really interesting. You've right. talked about your team though. Um, mm -hmm. So share if you can, because just, you know, everyone, you need to know that, that Beth's YouTube channel, as an example, you have almost 180,000 subscribers on YouTube. So, you're you're big um and so for if we're talking to someone who is just starting out they may be at the point where they have less than a hundred um so talk about your team today but also how your 
team evolved, how you built your team as needed? Sure. Well, that's a very good question because, uh, and I have Instagram, we have over 250,000 over on Instagram. We have close to 200,000 on Facebook. I mean, it, it gets, it's a lot. And my blog is very, very big as well. But I didn't have, in, when people will come and ask me for advice, I started where everybody else was. I started with 0 0.00. <laughs> people. Very, like I said, my, when my agent told me that I need to go find more Facebook friends, I'm like, I have five. Well, go find some more. Okay. But at the beginning, you're going to be wearing all the hats. You because you don't have the wherewithal to hire anybody, or most people don't. I, I imagine there there are some people that would be able to build their team. But I think it's very important. And my husband actually pointed this out to me. He's like, you need to build it from the ground up because then you will understand when you do have a team, you will understand the mechanics to discuss what you need and, and how to optimize, you know, their time and and all of that. So I wore all the hats. So I, you know, I started Instagram. So I was over at Instagram. My husband used to take my photos. It really, we were, it was just, you know, a two, two person team. And then as we grew, then it was like, okay, I can't, I can't do it all. Yeah. So how, how do we go about, you know, building our team out? And now we've gotten to the point. So I have, so I have YouTube, I have Instagram, I have Facebook and the, and the blog. So the blog really is, I mean, that's the granddaddy of everything. And we kind of look at the social channels, you know, we kind of, Feed, feeds into the blog because honestly the blog is the only thing that I you know technically own out there in the universe because the social channel I mean Instagram sometimes they mm -hmm. fail and we've, we've had outages over at Instagram mm -hmm. or the algorithms are against you I mean it can right. be very challenging out there so I always looked at it that the blog is the most important thing because I I actually own that yeah. and the social channels are second so the blog has always been the my main goal. So it was okay. So how do I so how do I build the team out there? So we need um, I need some behind I need some tech help. I need to make the site run as fast as possible. I need some help with the email subscribers. You know, building beautiful templates. So this is where I draw in those people with expertise on everything. Then plus. The people that come alongside me and then you know so I have a photo I have a dedicated I have two dedicated photographers you know that come and help me with my photographs I have writers that also help me help supplement um, they understand my message and they understand my voice so I'll have writers come along and help me I'm always there I mean I'm always overseeing mm -hmm. everything you probably wouldn't even recognize a blog post that somebody else has written and that that I've written you know, so I have that. So, so basically we, I have the people that help with all the tech uh, bucket. And then I have the creative bucket. I have an assistant that, that comes along and, you know, helps me in a day to day basis, helps me with my calendar. Mm -hmm. I have an editorial calendar, which is very important. Um, you know, what content is going live when I work with a lot of brands. Uh, yeah. That's very important content, you know, so so they so they help me you know keep on track with that. We have um, obviously I have an accounting team, you know, an accountant that helps you know with with all the billables. So really, it's just looking at what you know what uh, we briefly talked about this. You know what my strengths are. So I'm the content creator. So mm -hmm. I need to free my schedule up so I can devote myself to creating content over on YouTube, creating content for Instagram creating content for the blog. And then we just, we fill in the blank with, um, with those people that can help us uh, behind the scenes. So I can, I can go out and do that. Right. And the, the great, great example though, of how one builds something and that, that you have to add at certain points. Otherwise yes. you will spend your time doing things that actually are not in your wheelhouse and are, are really non-productive from a financial standpoint, um, why not hire the people who, who can do the things that would take you hours and hours to do and yes. it would take them, you know, 30 minutes. So exactly, exactly. Yeah. And I, and I always say this, this is not, 
I'm in an industry, it's not rocket science. It's not, uh, which I love. I mean, we, we never have to worry about, uh, or neurosurgery. No, no nobody's going to be, you know, <laughs> nobody's going to be, you know, uh, based on one of our mistakes. But, but it is a very labor intensive industry. It just really, really is. So you really need those people that will come along and support you uh, to, as I said, you know, to, to free me up. And, and there again, so we have just put it into buckets. So the blog is one bucket. So I have a YouTube team. I have a, you know, an Instagram team. And then, I mean, Facebook really, you know, I mean, Instagram Facebook. more or less kind of fades, yeah. feeds over into, into Facebook. So really, so then that's really how we have it now. So it's really very, uh, we have it down to a science now. Yeah, but you monetize through, uh, I'm assuming through affiliate marketing or, uh, you know, I, I would call you an influencer for some of the brands, actually, for our particular age group. Um, and so those are all relationships that I'm assuming have to be nurtured or or once you're in the door or not. I, I, I don't know anything about that world. Oh, I think you always have to nurture your relationships mm -hmm. with people that you work with. I think that's very, very key. And one of the things I'm very proud of my team is, I mean, we have repeat business because we yeah. have, we have built very good relationships out there and we always make it a win-win, even though it can be challenging to do that sometimes, but Yes, there's many ways that you can monetize a blog and you know monetize your social channels. Mm -hmm. And we've tapped it and you want to have as many revenue streams as possible for any business. You want you want to be very thoughtful about that because you don't want to be relying just on one mm -hmm. bucket. So we've been very pleased with we've been able to, to tap into that. And affiliate marketing is definitely very, very big. Mm -hmm. uh, we also have ad revenue over on the blog and we have ad revenue over on YouTube yes. um, and then brand partnerships. And then if there's anything proprietary that, uh, you know, perhaps your blog would have like, you know, an e-magazine or e-books or merchandise, things like that. You can also tap into that as well. So has the blog filled the desire to write a book, would you say? Oh, uh, I mean, I, that was my, how I got into this business to begin with. So now it really is. So now I, now that my team really is built up yeah. and I mean, I'm still very, very busy, but I'm really hoping that this is the year that I go back to finish my second book, which I mean, it, it's fiction. Yeah. So, and I, but I'm sure that there's a, there's a nonfiction book in me as well, because I know there's lots of lots of questions about aging that mm -hmm. women have and that I would be able to to share. So I, I think there's there's a book or two, maybe three yeah. in me. I agree with you. I uh -huh. was hoping you were going to answer that in that way because it's just so many of the things that you've said. One of them just touched me. Reinvention doesn't mean turning into someone else. Reinvention mm -hmm. is finding the grace and space to be who you are at 42 or 62 or whatever your age is, because we use that word reinvention today. And it's, you know, it's one of the SEO hot words or whatever, but yet it, it, it has an implication that we're becoming somebody other than who we are. Right. And yeah. So right. you need to write on some of these topics because I think it's super important today that maybe reinvention is becoming more of who we really are uh, and really getting to know who am yeah. I at this particular point in my life. When we raise yeah. children, or even maybe it's just a maturity level, when we're younger, we don't always know who we are. Mm -hmm. um, so there are a few that do, but uh, I can't say with myself, and I think that's maybe true of other people too, because you're all about those different hats you wear, and there's not as much for you. Um, talk about where your business is going and what's next for you, because I'm starting to hear more skincare, even food, exercise, some of this. Uh, is this a direction that you're going? Yes, yes okay. it's been very purposeful. And it's like writing a book. When you are writing a murder mystery, you can't just change genres right in the middle of the book. And 
<laughs> because it's just too abrupt. Yeah. Like, you know, people will be like, they just close that book off and they, you know, well, and so I, 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 I burst on the scene with, with, with style and, and sharing an outfit of the day. But mm -hmm. honestly, from the very beginning, I, I've tried to make it more than that. I've tried to make it very informational. And my YouTube channel is very helpful with that, you know, giving the tips, you know, talking about things, you know, besides just, you know, putting an outfit together. And I, I mentioned previously, aging is such a privilege. And so it's like, how do we do this? And how do we do this well? And how do we put a positive spin on this when it has always been negative that that aging has always been, you know, we're losing our minds. Or I mean, if you actually, if you like Google, if you really take a deep dive into aging, it's, it's very, I mean, you come away thinking, wow, we need to change the perception out here. It need, we need to push back these boundaries and because aging is a privilege and we have so much to offer and we, are at a place in our life where we have time to offer that we, we can get back because we're not wearing all the hats anymore. Right. Right. right? Exactly. Which, which is so it really, I mean, that in itself is so freeing. Of course, you know, of course I'm very involved in my children's life, but in a much different way, of course. I mean, they don't, you know, I don't need to take them to, you know, 500, um, you know, baseball, you know, <laughs> practices and games and you know keeping keep right. the medals straight and you're so not it's really it's really nice feeding three young boys that are right. growing up I mean, right and then yeah and then our pets and you know and yeah. all all of that of, of what it takes to raise a family so yeah it, it is really a wonderful place to be when you get to be a certain age and so there again, I want to start to cover all those topics that will help us be the best version of ourselves when we step out the door. So that is more than just an outfit. So it really is. So I'm really big into skincare because uh, it is very important. It's an important component of how we feel about ourselves, you know, when we look in the mirror, because I, I, and I do hear this from so many women is like, they don't even want to look in the mirror anymore in which is, I mean, that's just like heartbreaking. And so it's just there again, it's just a tool. You know, yeah. skincare is just a tool, just like makeup is a tool and your clothes are a tool, but I like to take it even further because our health is so precious mm -hmm. and it can be taken from us at any given mm -hmm. moment. So let's make the best of that too. Let, you know, let's optimize our health. Let's, you know, right exercise is very important. Why is that important? Well, because we start to lose our balance at a certain age, which makes falling that much easier, which, you know, then leads to that, you know, the, the broken hip or, you know, right. so these things are all, you know, being flexible at a, at, you know, a certain age balance, all these things are really, really important, you know, which goes into the health bucket. And so there again, um, why do we want to be healthy? Well, we probably have two-year-old grandchildren that we want to, you know, chase after. We need energy to do that. Or we want to, you know, finally take that vacation to Italy that we've been planning for. In good shape, travel. Yes, you yeah, need everything. You need to have our health. So, so anyway, so there again, so I just look at all the topics that are not discussed in a positive way, you know, because usually, you know, when we think about health, it's just like, oh, well, you know, we think about <laughs> when we get to, when we get to a certain age and we're just, you know, complaining about everything. So right. I just, so there again, I just want to, I want to flip the script a little bit and talk about, okay, well, what can we do? These are the things that we can, we can have some preventive care in our, uh, in our toolbox. And, you know, right. Yeah. That's part of self-care. Yes, know. it really is. Really, but really flipping the switch, you know, in, in terms of perception of what we should be doing and whatnot at a certain age, here you are, a woman of a certain age, myself too, and we've both, you started a business a while ago, but I just transitioned into a new one. Uh -huh. What, and, and your husband passed not that long ago. So if you can talk about what does having a business mean to you? What, uh -huh. how has it changed your life? And what are the, what, why should women do this? Why should women oh, start something? Right. Yeah. Why not? That's yeah. this. <laughs> why not? 
Why not? But Love honestly, that. it's just really given me so much. Honestly, it's just given me so much joy. Mm. Um, and I really, I, I love the industry that I'm in because I really can tap into my, you know, I guess, you know, I guess my customer, but I mean, they're mm-hmm. like my friend mm-hmm. and my, my reader. And so I get to hear from them. I get to hear their thoughts and they, you know, they can direct message me. They can email me. It's really, it's wonderful in that regard because it really keeps me and one of the things that I do talk about with on the blog is that you know we want to stay we want to stay modern we want to stay fresh we want to stay abreast of what's going on out in the world and so my business is one way that I am able to do that because it really keeps me on top of what's going on technologically Yes. Whereas, you know, perhaps, I mean, honestly, I think if I didn't have my business, I don't think I would really be on my social channels. I don't think I would mm-hmm. you know, have any, any desire to do that. And then I was thinking, okay, well, that's interesting because that's really my audience. So why are they, why are they on Instagram or why are they on YouTube? You know, so it really, mm-hmm. it, it's, it's good for me, you know, to think about these things. So I kind of take everything for granted now because I use these tools as part of my business, but so why would my reader not want to be doing this? And then, you know, how can I, you know, how can I help them? Because I think we do, if we don't have new adventures, if we don't Mm -hmm. have new horizons, I do think we get stodgy. I think we get stale and I think we get set in our ways. And I don't think any of us want to do that because I really think that we have to keep learning. We have to keep growing. So for me, my business has been a wonderful way to continue to do those things. So yeah. I, it's just, and, it, and it's just opened up so many doors and so many opportunities that I never would have, never would have dreamed of or thought of in a million years. Yeah. Yeah. That's, it's really interesting that you, that you speak first to the aspect of joy because every everything that you talked about you know staying abreast staying you know feeling as though you're i don't know contributing that Mm -hmm. there's a purpose every day you have things you have to do that that's part of what makes up joy you know um it's it's not just uh going on a trip a year and saying oh that was really fun um this running your business is an everyday venture to some extent and therefore the joys every day every day and i think that's that is that is one of the pieces that we as women especially aging need to push against is that is that not just how are we supposed to dress but how are we supposed to be that when we retire from the corporate job or we retire from you know being a full-time mom that now we're supposed to do x whatever that is why and like you said why not what is it that you want to do if you want to write a book i loved that you brought up the fact that the agent said to you you have to go get friends you have to have a facebook (laughs) presence so why not start with the blog and, right. and the blog will make you write every single day. Or, you know, if you love clothes or you love skincare, or you love cooking, why not? Yes. Um, yes. I, I, you're so inspiring on so many levels. Um, just keep growing that business and write the books in your spare time. Okay. <laughs> <That's> <laughs> so tell people um, who are listening to this how they can follow you. Um, you know, would you would you suggest all the different avenues? You mentioned YouTube. Mm-hmm. No, well. I wouldn't suggest all of them. I mean, you can follow me on all of the channels, which is great. But people digest content in different ways. Mm-hmm. And, you know, some people love the written word. I mean, I love the written word. So mm-hmm. that's that's where the blog really, that would be right up their av- yeah. alley. And especially if they like photographs too, if they like, you know, to take the time and analyze a photograph and be able to, you know, to dissect um, an outfit or, you know, skincare or, you know, a recipe, any of those things. Um, and, and, and actually, I mean, a recipe is very easy to translate to the blog. So if you like the written word and you like to look at photos, definitely follow me on the blog. Yeah. And I have an email subscription list and you, you can also sign up for that too. But 
But there again, perhaps you're still working. I mean, we dip down in demographically. I mean, we, of course, we definitely favor a, a woman of a certain age, but we have a much younger audience that taps in. So perhaps they're commuting. Um, I mean, with COVID, we a lot of people weren't commuting, but we're we're starting to commute again. So so maybe YouTube. So you're sitting on the uh, on the bus, or maybe you're sitting on. Um, Somewhere, you know, know, the L in Chicago, or, you know, yeah. so you have the time to, you know, you have your headphones in and you can uh, watch a little YouTube snippet. So, yeah. or scroll through your Instagram. So, I mean, we're the blog, you know, I mean, style at a certain age, there are many, many different ways that you can consume our content. So we have the, the YouTube channel, if that is more your thing. And it is, I mean, a lot of people love the video that they and that you you yeah. mentioned this earlier you really kind of feel connected yes. you know to the to the person that you're watching so um but we really i mean i'm very very proud of of our team because we really have it all we've we've gone we've gone out there and and uh we've we've figured out a way it's not always easy uh to be successful on the platforms but if you just like photos if you just like you know i mean reels are really big now over on instagram so you you know, 60 seconds or less, you know, I mean, I show like, you know, five outfits, you know, that you can, or I'll show you how to, you know, tie your scarf or I'll, you know, I'll throw a recipe together or, you know, I have some cute content, uh, you know, for the spring, like, you know, decorating your porch or your front, you know, your front door, things like that. So yes. Yeah. So Love lots that. of different ways. We, we are out there. Yes. Yes. And, you know, at different points in your life and at different points in in, uh, you know, whether it's your age or just your lifestyle, certain platforms will be more usable for someone. Yes. So what you're, what I love is that you're everywhere. I also love, and we're going to close on that, but I love that you are your own model. You're not, so I'm not looking at, um, you know, a 30 year old as lovely as a 30 year old is, but a 30 year old modeling what an outfit because I can't imagine that on me right um, so and also I have I applaud your courage to be a model to be you know photographed and videoed because that's something that I think as women as we're aging certainly we need to embrace more of mm -hmm. okay mm -hmm. I love that so did was that a conscious decision or was it a cost decision to use you it was, I, well, I mean, when I started, it was just me, you know, putting an outfit on every day and my husband snapping a photo. So <laughs> it, not a lot of thought was, you know, put into that. It was just like, oh, well, this is, you know, that that's what the 20 somethings are doing. You know, I can do that too. And then, and then when it, you know, started turning into a business, I mean, I really am the brand. Mm -hmm. um, you know, I really am styled a certain age. So uh, so now it's been more, okay, you know, how can we incorporate, you know, and we have some really exciting things coming up. So, you know, so stay tuned. So April 1st is really when we're going to start to, to launch some really fun, different things and, and really expand ourselves. But I mean, honestly, I didn't really even think about it at the very, very beginning. I mean, I didn't think it was going to go anywhere. I had no idea, no idea. You know, so, so I was like, oh yeah, we'll just, we'll just t take this outfit and take, you know, take this photo so now it's just more, um, I mean, yes, I, I am very, you know, uh, front facing, you know, you know, for style to a certain age, but now it's, I mean, I don't really think anything of it anymore. I think yeah. I've, been, I've been doing this for seven years now. So, I mean, do, do I really like to look at my, <laughs> <laughs> that's a whole different question. <laughs> We all know, we all, you know, immediately go to our photos and, you know, and focus on our flaws, but I'm, I'm also kind of, you know, I'm over that too. And that's also what I really try to share with my audience is just like, listen, if you want to look as slim as possible or, you know, hide your flaws or, you know, then, then go for it, but you're probably going to miss half the fun out there because it's just not always about disguising you know what we don't like you, you just kind of have to embrace yourself flaws and all and I think that maybe having to look at my photo all the time yeah has, you know has helped me you know has helped me in that category or on YouTube too but um I mean it, that, that's just the nature the nature of the business but it was also very important to me it's like 
when I first started blogging and it was the 20 somethings, you know, out there, I'm like, well, no, I'm not as slim as I was. I have gray hair. You know what? That's, this is who I am. This is who we are. This is, this is who women of a certain age, this is, this is who we are. And it's, and I hope that that message comes across loud and clear. It's really okay. And you're okay. You're more than okay. And you don't have to be, I'm, I'm not a, you know, I'm not a fashion model. I'm not, you know, I'm not a size two. I'm, I, I am, you know, I, right. as I said, you know, I'm very focused on being healthy, mm-hmm. living the best life possible, but I'm not perfect. You're not perfect. Show me a perfect person. No, yes, you know, right? you're not Photoshopped and fixed up, no. taking this off and that, but I, I really, exactly. I say thank you, not only just for myself, but also I think for everyone who who listens to my podcast, as well as all of your followers and viewers and subscribers, is thank you for being real. Thank you for being authentic and not wanting to present yourself as some sort of a perfect image, because by doing that, Beth, you empower every one of us to say, I love me. I, I might be a little overweight, I might have wrinkles, I might have gray hair, I might choose to dye my hair, whatever right? it be. but I love me. I love what I'm presenting and who I am and the woman inside underneath all of whatever the exterior is. But I also want to feel good. I want to yes. feel, you know, right? I want to feel like I'm the best I can be at my particular stage of life. So Exactly. Exactly. Great. And I hope that really is my message is, is mm-hmm. that we are enough. Yeah. Yeah. We, we are, we don't have to be younger. We don't have to be slimmer. We don't have to, it's always about looking forward. It's about today and then looking forward and embracing that. And of course I loved every aspect of my life. Um, but that was yesterday. So what's today, what's tomorrow. And, and, you know, what, what can we bring to the table? So and and be the best versions of ourselves exactly yeah. we are today well yeah. beth i want to thank you so much for your time if you don't mind stay on just a minute and sure. um, i'll stop the recording um, but thank you i this was fantastic on so many levels so oh well thank you so much for inviting me and let me know how i can share this on my end we will. and 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 share your podcast yeah uh because that's I think that's great. I I read your story and, and uh, I mean, I get a lot of people that ask me, I I don't, I mean, honestly, I really don't have a lot of time to, to spare, but I, your story was very inspiring. You go and live in Paris half the year. I think that's amazing. Yes. For you. Right. It's it's, I'm the best I can be at this particular stage of my life. And I'm not going to look too far in advance and I'm certainly not going to look behind me. Right. (laughs) So, exactly yeah, yeah. yeah it's just today but yeah. yes but let me let me know how i can share that you know when this is up and running and i'm happy to you know to share to share your podcast and then people can tune Fantastic. in and yeah it's all about supporting each other i love this, this oh it's very very important yeah. actually i can have you we have a uh, and we've resurrected it over on the blog it's called over under so it was are you over 40 or under 40 that that's the over under okay. but it's really uh, supporting women entrepreneurs so i'd love to have you so oh, oh it's my gosh, super, fantastic super super easy we we try to make it as as um easy as possible but it's just a little interview we send you like 10 questions very fun questions mm-hmm. like you know ocean like or pool you know to make it you know so we can tap into your personality but also then to talk about your business and uh, you know a little bit about that so we'd, oh. we'd love to have you on a future over under Oh, that'd be fantastic. Just love it, love it. it. So I'm going to hit the button here.